Hi everybody and welcome to our final exam study guide. Let me get this pulled up so that I can show you all what I'm looking at here. All right, so in order to prepare for our final exam, here's what you need to do. First of all, some important details. You can take the exam anytime during the week of finals, but the exam has to be completed and submitted no later than 11.59 p.m. on the due date. Remember, you can find that due date on Canvas in this week's module. Once you begin the exam, you'll have two hours to take the exam, including finishing it and submitting. So the latest you should start the exam would be 10 p.m. on the due date. Remember that no late exams will be given for any reason, so make sure that you make this your priority and plan to take it uh, with plenty of time to give yourself that full two hours to finish up. If you have extra time on the exam due to um, a disability or any accommodations that you might have, Remember that you will need to start even earlier so that you can have that full time and finish by 11.59 p.m. So here's how the exam works. In this lecture, we're going to go over four possible exam questions. On the actual exam, you will only see two of these four questions that I'm showing you today. And once you see which two questions are um, available to you, then you choose one out of those two. And you answer that one question, and that is your entire final exam. For whichever question you choose, make sure that you use two pieces of evidence and the quote sandwich method. Okay, so here is our first option, which might be on the final exam. So the first option deals with rhetorical analysis. Using this excerpt from a modest proposal as evidence, identify and explain the significance of two examples of effective rhetoric Swift uses. Here's the excerpt. So this is the excerpt that you may see on the final exam, and if this option is there and you choose to answer it, you would choose two examples of rhetoric from this particular quote and you would write your paragraphs answering the question using this evidence here. Remember that for whichever option you choose, I'm looking for about two paragraphs of um, evidence and explanation, and I'm, I'm looking for you to use the quote sandwich method that we've been working on throughout class um, in those answers, okay? So that is option number one. Option number two, using two quotes from post-princess models of gender as evidence, evaluate the article, explaining what types of evidence and rhetoric the authors use to persuade their audience. For whichever quotes you use, make sure to use the quote sandwich method to introduce, cite, and explain your findings. Remember, for this option, you'll need to do a little bit of uh, different kinds of preparation because you're responsible for choosing two quotes from this article ahead of time. And you can ignore this. Um, it still says literary analysis from a previous version of this presentation. So sorry about that. This one is going to be about evaluation. So um, should this option appear and you choose to go with it, you would need to use your two quotes from this particular article and you would need to explain what kind of evidence and rhetoric the author use, uh, the authors use, and how persuasive that is. So this will be um, demonstrating your evaluation skills, and remember that you're still using that quote sandwich method. And remember for this one, I will not be choosing the quotes for you. You're responsible for choosing two quotes ahead of time. And um, open notes are completely fine on our final exam. So if I were taking this final as a student, for instance, I would probably have my notes written down ahead of time so that I have those quotes with citations ready to go um, so that if this option is there, I'm prepared to write about it. 
Option number three has to do with some current events that we talked about. So for option number three, if this question is on the final and you choose to discuss it, what you would do is use the videos that we watched about popular culture and gender roles. That's where you're going to be pulling your evidence. And using those, you're going to synthesize three videos of your choice to discuss how viewing them all together allows for a deeper understanding of the complexities surrounding this topic. Remember that it, if this option is there and you choose to discuss it, uh, you would have need to had prepared for this option by choosing three quotes with citations from these videos before beginning the exam, right? Because you don't want to waste your valuable writing time by having to look up um, those different quotes. So just in case this question is an option, I would definitely go ahead and prepare for it by choosing one quote from three videos that we watched about pop culture and gender roles. Option number four has to do with more current events, and for this option, you will need to use the article and the video that we read and watched about human trafficking. For this option, you would need to present a brief argument persuading your audience to do something to help stop human trafficking. Explain what's going on, why it's an important issue, and what you think should be done to help address the problem. The sources that you need for this option can be found in the past week's modules, and remember to use evidence from the video and one of the articles you read about the same issue addressed in the video. So for our class, remember that what we looked at for human trafficking was about sex trafficking, and so you would be using the Mothers Who Sold Their Daughters Into Sex Slavery article and the Every Day in Cambodia video. So again, for this question in preparation, I would definitely look at those two sources and choose the quotes that I might want to use and kind of take some notes in preparation for this particular option in case it shows up on the final. So those are the four options that you may see on the final. Um, a recap of the quote sandwich method, because remember that for whichever option you choose, you do need to use that quote sandwich method to discuss your answer. For whichever option you choose, your answer should still be about two paragraphs long, and it should still use evidence from the applicable source or sources. So quick recap of the quote sandwich method. Remember that you start by making a claim then you move into introducing your evidence, including the author's name and the name of the source. Right before your quote, you're going to use a signal phrase. Include the quote or paraphrase. Make sure that you keep it short. Cite an MLA. And then lastly, explain the significance. So this is where you tell us how this quote supports that claim. Remember that your explanation should be at least twice as long as the quote itself. And also remember that for examples of how to use the quote sandwich method, you can check out our previous lectures and links on that topic. I've also provided you here with an example of the quote sandwich method in action. Um, this particular example is about a text that your class has not read, so if it doesn't make sense, um, that's why. But you can still see all of the same moves going into place here. So here you can see the first sentence makes a claim. This says, Marianne changes drastically in Sweetheart of the Song Chabong, going from a sweet, innocent girl with plans to marry her high school boyfriend and settle down to a ruthless killer lost in the jungle. So this is my claim. This is what I'm going to have to prove throughout the rest of the paragraph, right? So that's the claim. Next, I'm going to be introducing that source. So in Tim O'Brien's Sweetheart of the Song Chabong, so this is the author, this is the title. We're introduced to Mary Ann when we're told. This is my signal phrase, so I'm letting my audience know, hey, a quote's coming up, right? So we're introduced to Marianne when we're told, and then here's the quote itself. 
Notice that I have quotation marks to let my audience know that we have started a quote. And then I have quotation marks at the end to let my audience know the quote is done and now we're going back to me talking. I also have a citation here that's an MLA, so remember that you need to cite. And for MLA, you're including the author's last name and a page number. But in this case, the author's last name is right here in the same sentence, so I only need the page number. So that's why just the number is there. Okay, so that's the quote. And now we've come to the explanation part, right? So notice that the explanation is longer than the quote. And in the explanation, I'm going to explain how this character, Marianne, has changed so drastically throughout this story. So at this point in the story, Marianne's future is decided and normal. She would have been expected to marry her boyfriend, settle down, and raise children. That was her plan. She was perfectly happy to go along with the plan and lead a typical life. However, all of that changed once she went to visit her boyfriend, Mark Fossey, in Vietnam. So in this explanation piece, you can see how in this particular part of my you know, um, discussion, I am explaining how she was at the beginning, but I'm also letting my readers know that that drastically changed, right? So I'm using evidence to show she was this way at the beginning, and then my next paragraph would probably move on to talk about how she was at the end, right? So we could compare that. So that's just one example of the quote sandwich method. For other examples to see what this looks like, you might want to check out some of the sample student essays, which you can find in our essay packets. And you can also find more information about the quote sandwich method in other lectures where we talk specifically about the quote sandwich method. I've also included some resources here for you so that you can have a visual of what the quote sandwich looks like when you break it down. And I've also got some links here to help you um, with looking at how to make a quote sandwich. Um, also some help with timed writing strategies because I know that timed writing is scary for a lot of us. Um, and then some TED Talks for students just to help you kind of relax and prepare and get ready for the final. So a quick recap. Remember, you should be studying for all four of the possible questions. Also remember that notes are okay for the final. So write yourself some notes in preparation for each question and then use those on the final exam. Once you open the final exam, you'll see two options available. So we're studying for four. On the final, you will only see two of those four. And then you only need to answer one of those two options. For whichever option you answer, make sure to use the quote sandwich method and answer the question in about two paragraphs. Then you can add an introduction with a thesis or a main claim if time allows. The final is timed. You'll have two hours to complete it. So remember to start the final with enough time to finish by 11.59 p.m. on the due date. No late work will be accepted and the final will disappear at 11.59 p.m. on the due date. So if I wait and start my final at 11 o'clock, I am only giving myself 59 minutes to finish, right? So make sure that you start no later than 10 p.m. on the final exam date. Also remember that it is perfectly fine if you would like to take the final exam early. So if you're done with the rest of the work for class and you want to take the final, you know, the day before or a couple days before it's due, that's perfectly fine. Just remember that you only get one attempt. So make sure that you prepare um, accordingly and you can take it any time up until that final date. As always, if you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help you and answer um, any questions that you might have about the final exam. You've all done a really great job of finishing this class strong. We're in the final week, so stay strong, finish strong, and we're almost done.